Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at some continuity practice problems. So I've already made two videos on continuity, one that focused on a graphic approach to continuity and one that focused on an algebraic approach to continuity. Today we're just going to walk through some problems that you might see dealing with continuity in general. So first at the top here, we have just our definition of a continuous function. So a function is continuous at C if all three of the following are true. The limit as x approaches c must exist, f of c must exist, and the limit as x approaches c of f of x must equal f of c. We're going to be using this definition in the examples down here. So the directions say in the following graphs determine if the function f of x is continuous at the marked value of c, and if not determine which of the three rules of continuity the function fails. So I'm going to have to specify which of these three pieces of the definition are failing, and there could be more than one piece. In this first example, I can see that I have a jump discontinuity at x equals 3. So the piece of the definition that's failing here is the limit as x approaches c of f of x does not exist. Also, the limit as x approaches c of f of x does not equal f of c. Since there is no limit here, I can't equal the value of the function. I'm going to stick with just writing this first first piece. So no, this is not continuous. The limit as x approaches c of f of x does not exist. In this second graph, I can also see right away that this function is not continuous at x equals 1 because of this hole. The piece of the definition that's failing here is part 2. f of c does not exist, or in this case, f of 1 does not exist. So no, this function is not continuous because f of 1 is undefined. In this third graph, I can see that the limit as x approaches 0 is this y value here. So the first part of this definition is met. f of 0 also exists. It's just this y value down here. So the reason that this function is not continuous is because the limit as x approaches c of f of x is not equal to f of c. These two values are not equal. So this is a no the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x does not equal f of 0. We're just going to look at two more examples of these. So down here, I can see the limit as x approaches 0 of this function exists, f of 0 exists, and those two values are equal to each other. So yes, this function is continuous. For this last one, I can see that the limit as x approaches 2 from the left is positive infinity, and the limit as x approaches 2 from the right is negative infinity. So no, this function is not continuous because the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x does not exist. We can also say that f of 2 is undefined here. So the second part of that definition also isn't met because I can't tell this looks like a vertical asymptote. There's not going to be any y value there at x equals 2. Next, we're going to look at determining if a function is continuous algebraically. Again, I made a video about, again, I made a video regarding continuity algebraically. So I'm just going to run through these four bullet points. I'll also link the video for algebraic continuity if you want to go back and look at a more detailed explanation. So when I'm looking for functions, whether or not they're continuous algebraically, I first note that all polynomials are continuous. If I have a function that's defined as a fraction of polynomials, I know that that fraction will be not continuous where the denominator is equal to zero or when g of x is equal to zero. If I have radicals with an odd root, cube root, fifth root, seventh root, etc. Those are continuous everywhere because I can always take the cube root or the odd root of a negative number and a positive number. So I can put anything in here and get a value out. However, if I have a radical with an even root, square root, fourth root, sixth root, etc., those are going to be discontinuous when the expression underneath that radical is less than zero. So when I was solving for a domain in this case, I was setting f of x greater than or equal to zero to find the domain. If I'm finding discontinuities, I'm going to set that expression less than zero and solve that inequality instead. Let's look at a couple of examples. Find any points of discontinuity of the following functions. Number one, f of x is just this quadratic. This is a polynomial, so this is continuous everywhere. Number two, I have a fraction of polynomials, so the first thing I want to do is just factor the denominator if I can. And in this case, this factors to x plus 2 and x minus 2. Since the factor x minus 2 can I know I have a whole at x equals 
too. Since this is a factor that's left over, I know I have a vertical asymptote where that factor is equal to zero, which is x equals negative two. So there are two points of discontinuities here at x equals two and x equals negative two. Number three, this is a cube root function, so this is continuous everywhere. And number four, this is a square root function. So this thing is going to be discontinuous where x squared minus x minus 6 is less than 0. I'm going to first ignore that inequality sign and solve for my critical values. So when I factor, I get x minus 3 and x plus 2. That leaves me with critical values of x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. I'm going to stick those on a number line, negative 2 and positive 3, and I'm going to test numbers in each of these intervals to see if the value is less than 0. So if I I try negative 4, negative 4 minus 3 is a negative number, negative 4 minus 2 is a negative number, and a negative times a negative is a positive number. So I'm just going to put plus and minuses first. Between negative 2 and 3, say I pick 0, that's going to end up being negative. And something bigger than 3, say I pick 5, 5 minus 3 is positive, 5 plus 2 is positive, and a positive times a positive is a positive. Again, I'm looking for when this inequality is less than 0 to find my intervals of discontinuity. So the interval in which this function is discontinuous continuous is between negative 2 and 3, not including negative 2 and 3. So I'm discontinuous from negative 2 to 3 in parentheses. Next, we're going to be looking at determining whether or not a piecewise function is continuous. When I'm checking to see if a piecewise function is continuous, I need to make sure that the y values are equal to one another when the domain changes from one section to the other. So in this first one, my domain changes at x equals 1. So I'm first going to plug 1 in for x squared minus 3, and I get negative 2. I then plug 1 into the second part of that piecewise function, 1 minus 1, gives me zero. This first piece, since I was looking at values where x is greater than or equal to 1, this is actually the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x, and that's equal to negative 2. Since I plugged this second piece into the x is less than 1 part of the function, this is the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x that's equal to zero. Since the limit as x approaches one from the left is not equal to the limit as x approaches one from the right, that tells me that the limit as x approaches one of f of x does not exist. Therefore, f of x is not continuous. Number two, same idea. I'm first going to plug negative two in for x here. So I have negative two squared plus three times negative two minus two. So that's going to be four minus six minus 2. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Minus 2 is a negative 4. If I plug negative 2 in here, I have negative negative 2 squared. So that's going to give me negative 4 as well. So since the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right is equal to the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left, f of x in this case is continuous. Number 3. For the top piece of this function, I see that I have a fraction x minus 4 over x squared minus 16. I'm first going to factor that out because I know right away that this will definitely have some points of discontinuities and I need to see how that fits into the domain that they've given me. So if I factor the denominator here, I have x plus 4, x minus 4, which tells me that this piece of the piecewise function would have a whole at x equals 1. Four. But they're telling me to graph this piece of the function when x does not equal 4. So what I need to check now is if this second piece where they're defining x equals 4, if that's going to fill in this hole. So I also need to find the y value of the hole. In order to find the y value of the hole, I take what's left over after I factored and plug in the x value that the hole is occurring at. So in this case, that would be 1 over 4 plus 4, and that gives me 1 8. I now need to see if this expression fills in the one eighth, the whole left by that top part of the piecewise function. So now I'm going to take the one over three X minus four. I'm going to plug in four. So three times four minus four, that would be one over 12 minus four, which is one over eight. That's great. That means that this expression is filling in the whole left by the X minus four over X squared minus 16. So this function is in fact 
continuous. These types of problems are very common when looking at continuity. So the directions here read, find the value of the constant k that will make the function continuous. So in the previous examples, in order to find out if the function was continuous or not, I had to find when I plugged where the values or where the domain is changing into each part of the piecewise function, if those y values were equal to each other. So essentially I was asking myself, is 3x plus 2 equal to 2k minus x at a specific value. The specific x value I'm looking for here would be at x equals 1. So what I can do to solve for this value k is to first plug in x equals 1 since that's the value of x that I'm concerned about. And from there, now I only have one variable, that variable k, so that's pretty easy to solve for. So 3 and 2 gives me 5, add the 1 over k in this case is equal to 3. Same idea for number 2. In order to make this continuous, the y values kx squared and kx minus 6 need to be equal to each other when x is equal to 2. So I'm going to plug a 2 in for x and then just solve for k. So 2 squared is 4. I'm going to write this as 2k, subtract the 2k over, and I end up with k equals negative three. That's it for continuity practice problems. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.